Hey friends, how's it going? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to be doing another round of if you like this book, I think you might also like this book kind of book recommendation video. It's been a really long time since I last made a video like this, but I have made so many videos like this in the past. So if this kind of recommendation style really works for you, link down below, I will have all the previous times that I've done a video like this. But I think this is a really fun way for me to be able to recommend books. I have books across so many genres in this video. We have a lot of horror books, a lot of thriller books, romances. And a lot of these books are books that I would recommend just based off like similar plots or maybe they just have similar vibes. I think one of the most fun things for me as a reader is to try and find similarities between the things that I'm reading. And I love being able to find books that are kind of similar to other books that I've read in the past that way. If maybe one of these books you have read and it didn't really work for you, then maybe you could find something else that does have either a similar plot or similar vibes that would work for you. So kicking off the first one on our list, I have If You Liked Brother by Anya Auburn, then I think you would also like the thrill that's called How I'll Kill You. So Brother is actually more of a horror novel and then How I'll Kill You is more of a mystery thriller. But I think that if you liked Brother for like the plot and the idea of this book, then I think you would really like How I'll Kill You as well. Because both of these stories involve these families who are like murdering families. Like both of these main characters belong to families where they like commit murders all together. And then it's about how the protagonist starts to fall in love with the person that they're supposed to kill. And so in the story Brother, we're following this protagonist named Michael. And Michael lives on a farm with his family and his family has this obsession with like murdering women. And then one day he meets this girl named Alice and she works at a record shop and they really hit it off. And he decides that he doesn't know if he wants to like live this life anymore with his family because he might be catching feelings for this girl. And Brother is like a really fast paced, very entertaining horror novel. I had a great time with Brother. And I think if you liked those elements in this story, then I think you could also like How I'll Kill You because in How I'll Kill You, this story, we're following these three sisters and they kind of make it their mission to kill their boyfriends. And so in this story, we're following the youngest sister who's our protagonist and she falls in love with her first victim. And like the romance in How I'll Kill You was actually so cute. Like I was actually really here for the romance in this one too. And I just think both of these stories are similar in the way that we're following a character who belongs to a family of killers who no longer knows if like this is their destiny and kind of feels like they might be catching feelings for somebody that they're supposed to be killing. It's just very entertaining in both stories and I love them both so much. All right, the next one is gonna be if you liked Our Wives Under the Sea, then I think you might also like Chlorine. Both of these stories are literary horror books that also feature sapphic relationships and they both have water vibes. <laughs> In Our Wives Under the Sea, we're following this couple, we're following these two women who are dealing with the aftermath of a disastrous deep sea mission. Basically what happened is that this woman, she was going on this routine expedition and it said only this time her submarine sank to the sea floor. And then it's like after she gets home from this mission, her wife can just tell that something is wrong with her. I think Our Wives Under the Sea is a little bit more serious in tone, at least in terms of the way that this book talks about the grief that you go through when you watch someone you love go through something really hard and that they start to change because of it and they become someone that you no longer recognize. I think that's the real horror that's happening in Our Wives Under the Sea. Whereas I feel like with Chlorine, Chlorine is a little bit more of like a coming of age style of story. I feel like Chlorine does a really great job at talking about the horrors about coming of age when you're a woman and like getting your period for the first time. And there's also a lot of water vibes in Chlorine because she's a competitive swimmer in that book and she really loves mermaids. So like there's a lot of talk about water in both of these books and they have sapphic relationships and there's some of my favorite literary horror that I've ever read. So I think if you're the kind of person who really enjoys a solid literary horror kind of story, then I think either of these could really work for you. All right, the next recommendation is gonna be if you liked Lock Every Door by Riley Sager or Salem's Lot by Stephen King, then I think you would like Nestlings by Nat Cassidy. And honestly, the comparison between Lock Every Door and Nestlings is because of the New York City apartment vibes. Are you kidding me? So in both of these stories, we're actually following characters who get the opportunity to live in a very specific building in New York City. In Lock Every Door, we're following this character named Jules, and she gets the opportunity to live at this apartment called the Bartholomew. But there's all these weird rules at this apartment building, like no visitors, no nights away from the apartment, no disturbing the other residents, just like a whole bunch of weird weird things. And this book is a mystery thriller technically, but it does have all the creepy and spooky atmosphere of a horror book. And it's definitely my favorite Riley Sager that I've ever read. Like I love this book so much. And I think if you liked the creepy vibes and the atmosphere of the apartment in this book, then I think you might absolutely love Nestlings by Nat Cassidy. Because in this story, we're following a couple who's recently had a baby and they win the housing lottery in New York and they get the opportunity to move into this super nice building. But this building also has a lot of 
of complicated history. Like there's a lot of talk about the, how this building is cursed, how this building is haunted, and there's like some weird shit going on. And then one night he also notices some bite marks on the baby, which is where the like Salem's Lot recommendation comes in because you know, this story involves some creepy vampire shit. It says this book harnesses the creeping paranoia of Rosemary's baby with the urban horror of Salem's Lot. And I really do feel like this book definitely has that kind of like creepy eerie vibe that Salem's Lot has. So I do think if you enjoyed Lock Every Door or Salem's Lot, I think you need to check out Nestlings. It's so freaking good. All right, my next recommendation is gonna be if you enjoyed Stars in Your Eyes by Case and Calendar, then I think maybe you would also enjoy Someday Someday by Emma Scott. And these are actually both male male romances that are very heavy and will probably make you cry and are a lot more intense and depressing than you might be expecting them to be. I mean, in Stars in Your Eyes, we're following these two characters who are actors and they're gonna be forced to like fake date each other to promote the movie because one of the actors has a really bad reputation and they kind of want to clean up his reputation by having him date one of the other actors who's like squeaky clean, everybody loves him. And this book sounds like it has a really fun premise, you know, but it actually is a little bit darker and heavier than you might expect. Just because there is a lot of talk in this book about not being accepted by your family for who you are and for who you love. And I think that's definitely present in both of these books because someday, someday we're following these two characters who are both dealing with a lot of shit with their families are not accepting of who they are. The book Someday, Someday also talks quite a bit about like drug abuse and like characters who are recovering from drug abuse. But I personally found the characters in both of these romance books to be so freaking good. These are two of some of my favorite romances of all time. Like they both ended up making my favorites list of the years that I read them in. I think both of these stories are pretty heavy and they're pretty depressing, you know, because both of these stories involve these men who are getting over their childhood trauma and like their parents rejecting them for who they are. And it's really heavy and really sad, but it's also really beautiful the way that each of these stories are told. And I just felt so much for these characters. And then I think if you enjoyed Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang, I think you might also enjoy the plot. And this is specifically because of what these books have in common plot wise, <laughs> because in Yellow Face, if you didn't know, we're following this character named June and she's this white girl who has this Asian best friend who dies at the beginning of this book. They're both authors and it's about how this white girl June decides to take the book that her best friend has been working on and publish it under her own name. And so because of those elements of like we're following a protagonist who like steals the story of another writer friend, I think you might enjoy the plot if you liked that about this book because in the plot we're following this guy who's a professor and he really can't stand. There's this one student in his class that he just thinks is like a snobby little piece of shit. And this student actually dies, but the student had been telling him about this project that he'd been working on. And so then this professor ends up taking the idea and taking the manuscript that the student had been working on and he publishes it under his own name. And so I think if you like the elements of like a character stealing, you know, a manuscript or like a plot from another writer, then I think you would really enjoy the plot. I personally loved both of these. Like these were both five star reads for me and I had a lot of fun with both of them. I also think if you liked Yellow Face, you could like the writing retreat as well just because of the uh toxic you know like female friendships that exist in both of these books because of the way that June is like very jealous of her friend in this book it kind of reminded me of like the toxic friendship that exists in the writing retreat because the writing retreat also follows these two women who are both writers and just the, like the toxic energy between them and being jealous of each other and their lives it kind of reminded me of the friendship between June and Athena in this book and I also personally loved the writing retreat like the writing retreat was another five star for me personally, so I do see some similarities there. <laughs> All right, the next one is gonna be if you liked No One Can Know, then I think you might also like Not A Happy Family by Sherry Lapina. And these are actually both thriller novels that have very similar premises because both of these stories were following three siblings who are getting accused of murdering their parents. So in No One Can Know, we're following these three sisters and their parents were like really rich assholes. And it was really like in No One Can Know, it was one of the sisters specifically that was getting blamed. I think it was like the oldest oldest sister. And then in Not A Happy Family, we're following these three siblings who their parents are all murdered the night after Easter. And it turns out that all three of them could have had a reason to do it because they were all expected to like inherit millions of dollars. And their parents are also rich assholes in this book. So like you can see a trend here. <laughs> I just feel like these books reminded me a lot of each other when I read them. I think I actually preferred Not A Happy Family though. I think Not A Happy Family ended up being around a four star for me, whereas No One Can Know ended up being closer to like a three star. I thought this one was 
okay, but if you've read No One Can Know and you were kind of dissatisfied by what ended up happening in that one, then I think you should check out Not A Happy Family because I remember this one being very entertaining. Next up, if you liked The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson, I think you would also like Kill For Me, Kill For You. And both of these stories are inspired by Strangers On A Train. You know, like they both have the same kind of premise. You have these two strangers who have never met before, but after they meet, they decide to commit murder for each other. They are a little bit different though in the way that in The Kind Worth Killing, we're following this guy named Ted. And he meets this woman named Lily in an airport when he starts telling her about how he really wants to kill his wife because he just caught her doing something awful. And then Lily is just like, yeah, I would love to help you do that. And so it's about how he's starting to catch feelings for this woman, Lily, who is essentially a stranger who's going to help him kill his wife. But then in Kill For Me, Kill For You, it's kind of a different situation because it's about how these two characters meet in this group of people where it's like all of these people have lost someone. It's like a grief support group kind of thing. And they both kind of like share their stories to each other about how these awful men like ruined the lives of their children. And so they make this deal with each other that they're gonna kill the men responsible for like harming their children. But both of these stories were so great. I mean, The Kind Worth Killing is like one of my favorite thrillers of all time. And then Kill For Me, Kill For You is like maybe one of my top favorite thrillers that I've read so far this year. So I think both of these books would be incredible thriller reading experiences and I highly recommend both. All right, my next recommendation is gonna be if you liked Lord of the Flies or if you liked Battle Royale, I think you might like Fantasy. Fantastic Land. And I actually specifically wanted to mention these two because on the back of Fantastic Land, it literally says Fantastic Land is a modern take on Lord of the Flies meets Battle Royale. And I really can see the similarities here that if you liked Battle Royale, I really do think you could love Fantastic Land too. Battle Royale is one of my favorite books of all time. And in Battle Royale, we're following a bunch of young kids who all get taken to this island and they get left on the island, they get provided with arms, and they get told that they have to kill one another until there's only one of them left standing. And it is absolutely absolutely chaos and just totally wild. It's so interesting too because the back of this book actually does say that this is Lord of the Flies for the 21st century. I think Battle Royale is one of those books that is so incredibly action-packed. Like I could not believe for a book that is over 600 pages just how action-packed this book was. Like there was absolutely no filler and I think if you like a story like this that has such high action and suspense and also just like violence for the sake of violence then I think you might really like Fantastic Land as well because Fantastic Land is a story about how there's this place there's like a theme park in Florida called Fantastic Land and then there's a huge hurricane that leads to a very big disaster in this area and a lot of people get stranded at this park and there's probably like two to three hundred people that get stuck at fantastic land in the aftermath of like this really devastating hurricane these people are literally stranded at this theme park for weeks after this hurricane passes through and so because nobody's able to reach them the rules of society just kind of like go to the wayside and people just start brutally killing each other for no clear reason and it's really scary because it's just violence for the sake of violence you know like people are walking around with like heads on spikes it's some truly disturbing shit and something that's really cool about this book is that it's all written in like interview style format so like every single chapter in this book you're reading from the perspective of a different character who's reflecting upon what happened so it's like you're reading about everything after the events have happened but you're reading every single chapter is like a different interview i don't know i personally loved the way that this book was written i thought it was so interesting but i do think if you liked battle royale you could definitely enjoy fantastic land these were both five stars for me all right my next recommendation is going to be if you liked saw kill girls I think you might also like The Dead in the Dark. These are actually both young adult horror, kind of like mystery thriller, but mostly horror novels. And they also feature sapphic relationships at the center of the story. There's a lot of like small town mystery and like girls in the woods kind of vibes happening in both of these books. It just reminded me so much of each other. I mean, Saw Kill Girls, I remember that this one takes place on an island, whereas The Dead in the Dark actually takes place in this small town in Oregon. What's really cool about The Dead in the Dark is that we're following this young teen girl and her two dads like her parents are filming this like paranormal investigation type of show and so that's what leads them to this small town in Oregon where they were originally from but they're going to be coming back to to investigate some weird shit that's been going on but what I do remember about both of these stories as well is that there's this very specific perspective that you get to read in both of these books where you essentially get to read from the perspective of like the darkness that's in the town. I think for me personally that was something that kind of like <laughs> didn't work for me about both of these stories is like the perspective from the darkness. I thought it was a little bit cheesy in both of these books but I ended up enjoying The Dead in the Dark quite a bit more than Saw Kill Girls but I know that both of these are so loved and I just think if you really enjoyed Saw Kill Girls and you're looking for something with a similar vibe I think The Dead in the Dark is definitely the 
the way to go. I actually really loved the romance in the dead in the dark. Sometimes young adult books can be so hit or miss for me, especially with the romance elements. Like sometimes I just find them so cringy. But with the dead in the dark, I don't know, there was a lot about this book that actually really worked for me. I think I actually ended up giving the dead in the dark around like a three and a half star and then Sakio Girls was closer to like a three star for me. But they were both enjoyable and I think that if you enjoyed one, you could definitely like the other as well. Okay, and then my last one, this one's gonna feel so random, but if you liked Big Swiss, then I think you might also like The Book of the Most Precious Substance by Sarah Gran. And this might seem kind of like a weird recommendation. I think Big Swiss is more like a literary fiction, but it's kind of like a weird, weird book. And then The Book of the Most Precious Substance, I think this one kind of leans more into the horror category, but this one also has like a literary style of writing to it. And it's also a really freaking weird book. <laughs> but both of these books do have such similar vibes and they really reminded me of each other while I was reading Big Swiss. Because in Big Swiss, we're following this protagonist named Greta and she is a transcriber for a sex therapist. And while she's listening to these sex therapy sessions, she starts to become fascinated with this woman that she calls Big Swiss. And then the story's about how she meets this woman, Big Swiss, in real life and starts developing this connection with her. And it's like so weird because she's like listening to her sex therapy sessions and she doesn't know. And so I think Big Swiss is a really interesting book because it has really interesting, unique characters. And then it also has this like weird sexual like undertone throughout the book because of like the sex therapy sessions. And I think if you liked the style of that book, then I think you could like The Book of the Most Precious Substance as well. Because in this story, we're following this character named Lily and she is a rare book dealer and she gets this job that somebody wants her to track down this book called The Book of the Most Precious Substance. And it says it's a 17th century manual on sex magic that is rumored to be the most powerful occult book ever written if it exists at all. And this mysterious book promises unlimited power and unrivaled sexual pleasure. And so as you can imagine, this book is pretty weird as well. It's pretty weird and sexual as well. I don't know, there was just something about the writing style in both of these books. It just really, they reminded me a lot of each other. And I just think if you liked the weirdness in either one of these books, then you could like the other as well. All right, so those are all of my book recommendations for if you like this book, I think you would like this book as well. Thank you so much for watching and you'll have to let me know if you agree with any of the books that I recommended or if you have any other books that you would recommend based off of these. Any other books that you think are also similar that you would also recommend recommend in tandem with some of these. And again, I'll leave linked down below all of the previous times that I've done videos like this because it has been so freaking many. I've also done videos like this that are like, if you like this book, I think you should check out this movie or TV show. So I'll also have those videos linked down below. And then I have also done in the past, if you didn't like this book, I think you should read this book instead, which is a video that I'm hoping to do very soon, probably next month or in the next month or two. I want to do a video like that because I also think it's really fun to be like, if you didn't like this about this book, then here's a book that I think you could enjoy instead. And so thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you very soon with another video. Bye!